What's up and welcome back to another episode of Keeping Up With The Commanders. I'm your host, Mason Kennedy, and today is one of my favorite episodes of the year. We are going to be breaking down my final prediction for the Commanders 53-man roster, which will be announced or finalized next Tuesday, next Wednesday, sometime around there. First, though, we have some major storylines to go over from this past week of Commanders football. We've got Jane Daniels officially being named the starter this past Monday, I think. And then today, as I'm recording this, the Washington Commanders have traded for Cade York, the former fourth-round pick out of LSU, the kicker, uh, who's been on the Browns for the last couple of seasons. So we're going to be talking about that as well. Let's just jump right into it now with Jane Daniels, because the announcement that we've been all kind of expecting, but kind of been waiting to see when it was officially going to be announced, was officially announced on Monday when Dan Quinn said that Jane Daniels is the starting quarterback. He's going to be starting week one against the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and hopefully for this entire season. Like I said, it was an expected move, but it is now official. Quinn said that he wanted to go through the motions of what a quarterback competition would be like. He'd want, he wants to put Jane Daniels against competition. That competition being of course, Marcus Mariota and the other quarterbacks in the quarterback room. Now, Daniels, of course, he's, if you've just heard about reporters saying he's been the best quarterback throughout this entire summer, this entire spring, ever since he was drafted, without a doubt. He's been the best quarterback in this room, which, I mean, you can like look at that in the point of view from like the backup quarterbacks may not be that great or because he's just a rookie or you want to look at it from the point of view of, oh, he's just a rookie. He's already beating out these veterans. You can look at it however you want, but Jane Daniels has been the best quarterback, and he's been the best quarterback here from pretty much day one. Uh, he he got the starting reps from Marcus Mariota probably within a week, I think, of mini of rookie minicamp, but not rookie minicamp of uh, OTAs. So I mean, it's Ben Daniels' team. It's Ben Daniels' job to kind of not really take, but to um, hold, I would say. And he's exceeded expectations in terms of Dan what Dan Quinn has said. Um, Daniels has earned it. Uh, I really feel like he's earned it too. He's put up three scoring drives so far in the preseason or three would-be scoring drives in the preseason. Of course, um, the missed kick by Riley Patterson on one of those drives didn't res- didn't result in any points, but he's put his team in position to score every time he's out there on the field so far. He's looked great in training camp. He's gotten pretty much the first team reps throughout the entire training camp, uh, pretty much almost all of them. Um, but yeah, Dan, uh, Jane Daniels has earned it. Hopefully it's a new era. Hopefully we look back at Monday as a start of, of uh, a new era of Washington football. Um, I feel like we're having this new era almost every couple months now with these new things coming in for Washington football. But hopefully Monday will be a historical day for the franchise. And now we look ahead. I doubt I doubt Daniels plays on, um, on, on was it Sunday, I guess, when we play the Patriots on Sunday. I doubt he plays at all. He hasn't officially, again, Quinn hasn't officially said if he's playing or not yet, but I don't think most of the starters will play at all. I think it'll mostly be for the backups, third stringers, those types of guys. So I, w- I wouldn't expect Daniels to play on Sunday. I think they're ready to go. They're going to uh, have, him, have him ready to go for week one against Tampa Bay in Tampa. So with that being said, Jane Daniels is QB1. I didn't really want to talk about that that much. Again, it happened last Monday. You guys have probably heard it by now. So moving on now to today's news. The Washington Commanders have traded for Cade York. Cade York, the former fourth round pick out of LSU in 2022, the kicker for the Cleveland Browns. I I tweeted his stats from 2022. Let me pull that up real quick. Uh, But Cade York, again, we've talked about these kicker problems for Washington. Ramiz Ahmed, Uh, Riley Patterson, both of those guys have not played great. Ahmed was cut a week and a half ago, a week ago, I want to say. And Riley Patterson, spoiler alert, was cut today, shortly after the trade was announced by all the insiders. So what is Washington giving back in this trade for a kicker? A conditional seventh round pick. I have not found out what year that seventh round pick will be. But again, I don't think it will really matter that much. Again, it's also the condition on that seventh round pick. It only turns to a seventh round pick if Cade York is on the final roster come Tuesday or Wednesday. I think that's what's being reported right now. So again, maybe that it'd be worst case scenario for Washington, but maybe 
this doesn't even turn out to be anything if they do cut Cade York before uh, before the final rosters are announced or not. So, like I said, uh, Washington is second in waiver claim right now on the on the waiver wire. They are number two right behind the Chicago Bears. I'll get into what that means in a little bit, but uh, it basically gives Washington a lot of options in terms of what they can do with changing the roster and bringing guys in that might just not make the roster on some other teams. So, again, this is a good move from Adam Peters. Pretty much nothing for Cade York. Uh, York, he kicked for the Browns in 2022, and then he lost the job last year to Dustin Hopkins. Cade York, his, this was his stats in 2022. He was 24 of 32 field goals. He was 75%. Uh, that That is 75%. Uh, makes, made three out of every four. He was four of seven from 50 plus yards and then 35 of 37 from extra points. So he was pretty consistent um, in terms of his extra points, 35 of 37. Four of seven from 50 is not horrible. It's not wonderful. But at this point, you're not going to get a, a all pro or pro bowl kicker at this point because it's you're, you're looking for like teams, backup kickers that have lost the job. So uh, Cade York, that was Cade York's stats in 2022. Again, he lost the job last year to former Washington uh, football team. I think he was on the football team or he's on the Redskins. Uh, Dustin Hopkins, who lost the job here to like some other. There's some big connection with Dustin Hopkins in Washington. And it goes back to Cade York and somehow. I, I don't know. I saw from Al Galdi. But uh, anyways. The Commanders trade for Cade York. Uh, it's not a bad move. I can't. Uh, I, hopefully, Cade York kicks good on Sunday because if he doesn't, then we're just back, back without a kicker. So I woke up this morning. I saw Riley Patterson was cut. I'm like, okay, we don't have a kicker. Next tweet I see is Cade York has been traded to the Washington Commanders. So it's um, yeah, it's a good trade in my opinion from Adam Peters. Now I want to clear this one thing up. It was with the waiver claims. I know people can get very confused with this because it's kind of a confusing system. So I wanted to clear this up. For what well, first of all, what is a waiver claim and what is the difference between signing a player and claiming a player off of waivers? So the waiver claim, there's the waiver wire where when you release a player, uh they hit waivers, right? And it's like in a fantasy football draft a uh, fantasy football league, right? When you can claim players off of waivers. And there's a specific time and all of that. The waiver wire usually is ranked from the worst team in the league who has the top priority to the best team in the league who has the 32nd priority. So the Washington Commanders are second, right? Because we have the second pick in the draft. All offseason, we've been number two in the waiver wire order because technically, based on last year's record, we have the second worst team in the league. So um, what does this mean when you claim a player off of waivers, right? It, you kind of go down the order. So the Bears are number one right now, right, in the waiver wire. So if the Bears wanted a player, let's say Bob Johnson, right, the Bob Johnson, right, he, he gets cut, right, and let's say the Bears want to sign Bob Johnson. I'm just coming up with a random name, right? The Bears would have first priority in the waiver wire to sign him or to claim him off of waivers, right? So he would get claimed. You have 24 hours to put in a claim once the player gets cut. And he would put in a claim for waivers. The Bears would get him because they have the first priority. But let's say the Bears didn't want Bob Johnson, right? And the Commanders wanted Bob Johnson. Then the Commanders would put in a claim for Bob Johnson, and it would go to the Commanders who have the second um, second priority, right, in the waiver wire, waiver in, in waivers. And so that kind of gives an added boost to the weaker teams, to the teams that are probably the worst in the league compared to the teams that are the best in the league. Now, the difference between claiming a player and signing a player is claiming a player, you inherit their contract from the previous team. So if Bob Johnson, and he, he was on his previous team, right? He was on a two-year, let's say, $10 million contract. That's pretty expensive for like, I don't know, random player I'm coming up with. But he was on a two-year, $10 million contract, and he's going into the first year of that deal. If he gets released, right, by whatever team he was on, and then the commanders decide to claim him off the waivers, off of waivers, they inherit that two-year, $10 million contract in its full, in its entirety, right? But if Bob Johnson clears waivers, right, which means no one put in a waiver claim for him within the within that 24-hour time frame, 
then he can sign with any team he wants for however much money he wants. That contract kind of disappears for any new team that he signs with. So that's kind of how it works. It can be a little bit confusing. Hopefully that helped clear clear things up for some people that were a little bit confused on how the waiver claims work. Some people were saying, since we traded for Cade York, we don't have to use our waiver spot uh, for kicker, but instead we can use it for a position player, which is half true because right now the commanders have the second priority right in that waiver claim but a waiver wire with all 32 teams so again it's a massive advantage right but it's not just for what you can't claim one person at a time you can claim however many people at a time that you want so up until week three which i believe is when it kind of switches to the new season and people that have the worst records and all that or teams that have the worst records up until week three the commanders will have the second priority in that waiver wire to claim whatever players they want and they can claim however many players they want at whatever time i think there's like once a week is when the waivers process or something but um or i mean i think it's multiple times a week or it, it's, it's that 24-hour time frame from when the players cut to the next day i think at like 4 p.m is when you have to put a claim in by but uh yeah so the commanders can claim how like whoever they want however many people they want that's that's the part that's getting confused right now they they don't have to limit that second priority to just one person. They can do it for however many people they want, which is going to become a, become a huge help once we get the Tuesday and Wednesday when other teams are cutting some players that Dan Quinn and Adam Peters might want. So I wanted to clear that up because that's been a little, that's been confusing some people. So hopefully, hopefully that clears it up. Uh, it's still a good trade for Washington, right? Um, it's a kicker on a conditional seventh for a conditional seventh rounder that may not even convert if Kd York isn't here this time next week. So it's not that big of a deal. Um, not really a deal at all. Again, Kd York was a highly touted kicker prospect coming out of college. He hasn't really worked out uh, with the Cleveland Browns, but maybe he can have like a, a Daniel Carlson like arc with the what, with what he's having with the Las Vegas Raiders right now. So. That is uh, the trade for Cade York. Uh, it's a good move from Adam Peters, and hopefully he can keep on cooking. So that's that. Now moving on to one of my favorite exercises of the year, creating my final 53-man roster for the Washington Commanders. This has been something I've been looking forward to. I've been in the lab trying to cook something up here for the last couple of weeks, and I think I've settled with what I've got right now. So... I'm going to I'm going to make this prediction before the final preseason game cuz again probably I would say 51 of the 53 spots are probably locked in if you are Dan Quinn or Adam Pierce you probably know 51 of the 53 players probably that are going to be on this roster next week. Um now I don't I don't the fans don't know who those 51 of the 53 are but I'm going to try and predict them. So here we go. Starting with quarterback QB1 Jane Daniels and then QB2, Marcus Mariota. Two quarterbacks on this roster. Notable cuts here. Sam Hartman, I think he's going to be a practice squad guy. Jeff Driscoll, Trace McStroley both get cut as well. Um, Sam Hartman has been kind of the one. Will he be on the final roster? Will he be on the practice squad? Hartman has been injured recently. He's not going to be playing. He didn't play last week. He's not going to be playing next week. I think he's a practice squad guy. You can safely release him. I don't think he gets picked up by another team. On their 53 man roster so i think hartman's a practice squad guy you go into the season with two quarterbacks jane daniels number one marcus mariota number two there's been some narrative lately that has pointed towards jeff driscoll being that qb2 over marcus mariota now here's my thoughts on that marcus mariota was one of the commander's first signings back in um march i think i think it was march uh, I think Mariota is the backup, even though he has sort of struggled throughout training camp and Jeff Driscoll. Now Jeff Driscoll has gotten more playing time in the preseason, right? Mar Mariota was kind of just thrown in there for one drive where they ran the ball once he got sacked once because the offensive line gave him no time. And then they threw like a screen. So it wasn't really, Marcus Mariota didn't really do anything that bad on that drive. Right. But that's not a great, just one impression so far from this preseason for Mariota. 
Well, we've seen Driscoll for more than a half of football now. So almost an entire game's worth of football for Jeff Driscoll. So it's, uh, yeah, so we've seen more from Jeff Driscoll. I don't think Driscoll has done anything to make me say, oh, he's, he's definitely better than Mariota. We should definitely keep Driscoll over Mariota. Even though Mariota is also hurt right now, the <laughs> common theme in this quarterback room, I think he'll be healthy for week one. I don't know if he plays, though, in the third preseason game. They haven't said anything about it. But Jane Daniels, number one, Mariota, number two. Uh, Driscoll, McSorley get cut, and then Hartman on the practice squad. Moving on to running back, I've got three running backs on this roster. Brian Robinson, Austin Eckler, and Michael Wiley, the UDFA out of Arizona. Wiley has been one of the preseason standouts for this commander's team. I have Wiley making the roster over a guy like Chris Rodriguez, Jeremy McNichols, and Austin Jones. Uh, Wiley, I mean, we've seen what he can do. He scored a touchdown. Uh, I really like his skill set, especially um, with Brian Robinson, who's more of a power back. Eckler's more of a receiving. Wiley's kind of a little bit of a mix of those two. So I think Wiley will be a good RB3. I don't know how much playing time he'll get, though. So, again, I don't really know how much it matters unless a Robinson or an Eckler get injured. I do think Wiley has had a better preseason than a guy like Chris Rodriguez, though. Rodriguez, a former six-round pick back in 2022, I believe. Or maybe it was 2023. I think it was 2023 uh, that Ron Rivera made. So Adam Peters, Dan Quinn don't have a connection to him. Uh, Wiley was a UDFA they signed this year. And Wiley has stood out so far in the preseason. I like his chances on this roster over a guy like Chris Rodriguez. I think right now Wiley or McNichols will be the RB3. I like both of those guys over Chris Rodriguez. So that's my prediction for the running back. Moving on to wide receiver now. I have six wide receivers. Uh, Dan Quinn, when he was in Atlanta, every single year he kept six wide receivers. So I'm pretty confident that this will be the, it will be the same case this time. Terry McLaurin. Uh, okay, so for my wide receivers, I kind of split. So it's like outside slot and then the number three guy. So don't mind the order here because I feel like Cliff Kingsbury is going to mess with this order a lot throughout the season. But this is how I list, this is how I've listed them on my depth chart. On the outside starter, I have Terry McLaurin. Outside, oh, sorry, slot starter, Ola Alamedi Zacchaeus. And then the third wide receiver three, that's a starter, is Deami Brown. And then in this backup column, the second string column, I have Luke McCaffrey on the outside, Jahan Dotson in the slot, and Bryson Tremaine as the wide receiver three in that backup role. So this is uh, these are the six. McLaurin, Zacchaeus, Brown, McCaffrey, Dotson, Tremaine. Don't mind that order, like I said, because I feel like from Zacchaeus to Dotson, Zacchaeus, Brown, McCaffrey, Dotson, they're all going to kind of get mixed up at the beginning of the year. So a lot of playing time for those four. I think they're going to be rotating all five of them in and out of the lineup a lot. Tremaine, maybe not so much, but I would not look at the difference between a wide who who's the wide receiver two on this team and who's the wide receiver four on this team. I don't think it'll be a big difference. So I know a lot of people are saying De'Ami Brown will be the wide receiver two, and then it has Dotson fallen off to being a wide receiver four or five. If Dotson is maybe like a five, and he's like behind Luke McCaffrey as well. That could maybe be a sign. But again, I would not pay attention that much to whoever is wide receiver two and wide receiver three and wide receiver four. Because I feel like all three of those guys will be used a ton. But this leaves out some guys at wide receiver. Uh, the notable ones being Jamison Crowder, who I think has the seventh. Uh, I think Crowder or Tremaine will be the wide receiver six on this team. I have Tremaine over Crowder just because Tremaine... I like his skill set. I like how uh, he's tall. He's six foot three, I believe, six foot four, which no other wide receiver on this team even comes close to that. So Tremaine brings a lot of hype to this team. Uh, Jamison Crowder just, uh, is, I think, only six foot or somewhere around there. So again, he, he'd he be just another similar size to a guy like Terry McLaurin or Jahan Dotson. Uh, so that's why I have Tremaine over Crowder, even though Crowder can bring more of a returning aspect, like returning skill set. Uh, to to it, but uh, I have them cutting Crowder. Same with Kaz Allen, Mitchell Tinsley, Byron Pringle. I'm not going to list the other ones, but you guys get the point. Those six are my guys right now. McLaurin, Zacchaeus, Brown, McCaffrey, Dotson, and Tremaine are my six wide receivers. So uh, I think 
like I said, Tremaine or Jamison Crowder will be wide receiver six. I don't – Kaz Allen's chances, they tried to move him at running back and wide receiver. They put him all over the field. His chances are not good right now. He fumbled last week. It was not pretty. Mitchell Tinsley, we saw what happened on that last play. It was pretty bad. Um, he's not been consistent enough so far in training camp. Byron Pringle was kind of just a camp body, I feel like, uh, plus some other names as well. So, yeah, that is that for wide receiver. Moving on to the offensive line now. The offensive line is an interesting one. At left tackle, starting left tackle, I have Cornelius Lucas. All right? Starting left guard, Nick Allegretti, center, Tyler Biotish, right guard, Sam Cosme, right tackle, Andrew Wiley. That's the starters. Uh, left tackle, backup. Now, the, this, I'm just going to go through the list on the backups. Brandon Coleman, Julian Good-Jones, Michael Dieter, Chris Paul, and Trent Scott are going to be the five backups. I have Cornelius Lucas over Brandon Coleman right now as the starting left tackle for week one. I think this is what's going to be listed on the depth chart, more so because I think Coleman is going to be injured. I don't know if he's going to be ready to play week one. So I think Cornelius Lucas will be the starter week one at left tackle. Coleman has not played in any preseason games so far, and he has not practiced with the team in, I feel like, a week and a half, two weeks now. He's had some individual stuff he's done, but not with the team. I don't know how confident this this uh, this coaching staff is to throw Coleman out as the starter week one, even though he hasn't played in a game so far in, in like an in-game scenario at all. So I, I think Cornelius Lucas will be the starter at left tackle in terms of the backups. Uh, Cause I think we all know who kind of the other starting four stars are going to be. That's kind of solid, uh, like solidified right now. Julian good Jones has had a pretty solid preseason. I have liked what I've seen out of him. I think Julian good Jones is ahead of, ahead of Ricky Stromberg right now. Stromberg was one of the guys I've cut. I think Stromberg, though, if he does not make the roster, I would not be surprised if I if you see him traded for like a day three pick because Stromberg has the talents. He was, again, a day two pick in 2023, a, a former third round pick. Uh, a lot of teams liked him. He wrote, he like rose up draft boards a ton, especially in the final couple months of draft season that year. So I think a lot of teams still really like Stromberg. He has not worked out so far in Washington. He really struggled throughout the preseason so far. But I would not be surprised if a team is willing to trade a late day three pick for a guy like Stromberg who can they, who's still young and they could still develop into being a potential starter or like a six man um, on that offensive line. So I have Julian Good-Jones over Stromberg right now. Uh, Chris Paul, I feel like, is a guy that Washington has kind of loved. They've used him at right tackle. They've used him at left tackle some. They've used him at right guard. He's kind of played all over this preseason, which I've kind of liked. He's gotten some experience all over the offensive line, so we'll see what happens there. But I think Chris Paul makes this roster. Michael Dieter is going to be, I think, the sixth. Um, it's going to be like that that fourth guy on terms of the interior. He's going to come in. He can play left guard. He can play center. He can play right guard. If a guy like Allegretti, Biotish, or Cosme gets injured, Trent Scott is going to be the backup right tackle. There's just not a – I mean, it's not a great option, but there's just not a tackle on this roster that has, that has like, beat out Trent Scott for a backup spot right now. So it's not great, but there's just – I don't know who else they would go with. So – that's my offensive line. One more time running through it. Cornelius Lucas, Nick Allegretti, Tyler Biotish, Sam Cosme, Andrew Wiley are your starters. And then your backups, Brandon Coleman, Julian Good-Jones, Michael Dieter, Chris Paul, Trent Scott are your backups. That's 10 offensive linemen bringing the offensive total to 24 players uh, of the 53. And so, again, in total, your starter. I'll go over the starters one more time. Jane Daniels, Brian Robinson, Zach Ertz, Diami Brown, Alamedi Zacchaeus, Terry McLaurin, Andrew Wiley, Sam Cosme, Biotish, Allegretti, Lucas. That's your offense. Moving on now to the defense. This is where things get interesting. I have 24 on, on offense, so that means I have 26 on defense. We'll start with edge rusher. All right, we'll start with edge rusher. Dorrance Armstrong and Cleveland Farrell are your two starters. They will be the starters week one. I have no doubt about it. Moving on to your backups now. KJ Henry as your edge backup. And I also have listed Jamin Davis as an edge as well. I listed him over 
an outside linebacker um, spot for Jamin Davis. I don't know if he'll be listed as an edge or if he'll be listed as outside linebacker on the final roster. He's been playing more on the on the line of scrimmage as an edge rusher. That's really the only position he's played so far this preseason. So I'm just going to have to list him as his edge, but he could be listed as an outside linebacker and still have that same role once we get to the regular season. So it's it's really up in the air. Uh, KJ Henry, like I already mentioned, and then two other guys, Dante Fowler and Javante Jean Baptiste. Uh, Fowler will probably be the third edge rusher. I have him. I don't know why I list him behind a guy like Henry or Davis, but uh, Fowler will probably be the third edge rusher, maybe outside linebacker. He's currently listed as an outside linebacker. I don't really know where. Um, he, he's probably going to be rushing the passer a lot, I feel like. So it, it's kind of – he's been playing on and off the line of scrimmage, but you know, the, you know how Dan Quinn likes to mix things up a little bit, so – it's kind of hard to list these guys in a certain spot because you know they're going to be playing multiple positions. So uh, Farrell, Armstrong, Henry, Davis, Fowler, and Jean Baptiste are your six edge rushers. Um, and then some, the guys that I cut on edge, Andre Jones, Jalen Harris. F.A. Obata is a guy I want to talk about a little bit. Obata is someone who has not played this preseason, has not practiced this preseason. He's coming off a very bad injury last year. That was season-ending. He's currently on the physically unable to perform list. We've I've talked about how much I like F.A. Obata on this podcast before a lot last season. He can play up and down the line of scrimmage. He's like sneakily very good in terms of kind of just playing his role on the defensive line. So he, he's been one of the more underrated players on this defensive line over the last few seasons. But I don't know what's going to happen to him because... Obata, if he were to be on this team, I don't know how much Dan Quinn and Joe Witt want to have him on this team. You have six guys uh, and like a lot of your backup edge rushers and backup defensive tackles are young. And I don't know if they would clear waivers for you to sign again. Um, if you were to release a guy like KJ Henry or Javante Jean Baptiste to bring him back, because what you have to do if you don't want F.A. Obata out for the season, you would have to sign, you'd have to, sorry, you'd have to, yeah, sign or take um, Obata off of the physically unable to perform list before the 53-man roster and put him on your final 53-man roster originally. So he will take up a spot on the final 53-man roster if you want him on this team and playing this year because you can't store him on the on IR or on the pup list and put him out for the season. I don't think. So yeah. Um yeah, so Obata would have to be on this 53, even though he's injured, if you want him to play at some point this season, which I don't know how much Dan Quinn and Adam Peters want to risk potentially instead of using a hurt in a hurt FA Obata and having him take up a roster spot. You'd want to keep make sure you 100% keep a guy like KJ Henry or Javante Jean Baptiste on this roster instead. So uh, again, it's up in the air with Obata. I have him as a cut right now. I don't think he makes this roster. Maybe he gets put on season-ending IR eventually because it sounds like there's a pretty bad injury. He has not practiced this summer, not practiced over the spring. He has not cleared yet for football activities. So don't really know what the status is with him. But would be a good add. I don't know how much value he would have, though. Coming off an injury like that with some of these new guys, like you have Johnny Newton now. Once he, once Newton will be healthy, you have him on the interior. You have a guy like uh, Javante Jean-Baptiste and KJ Henry. We saw play a little bit of three-tech uh, in the last preseason game. So I don't really know if you need a guy like F.A. Obata on this roster anymore. So it, it'd be a tough way to go out for him because he's been so underrated uh, from the, just the amount of impact he's made in his time here. But uh, it, it uh, I think his roster chances are not looking good right now. So that's what I have at edge rusher. Moving on to defensive tackle now. Jonathan Allen, Deron Payne are your two starting DTs. And then Johnny Newton and John Ridgeway are your two backup DTs. This means that Fidarian Mathis, Taylor Stallworth, Norrell Pollard, and some other guys are not going to be making this roster. I feel like Allen and Payne, of course, are locks to be the one and the two. They have, I don't know if they've played this. I don't think they've played this preseason. And then 
Johnny Newton, uh, I think he's going to be healthy. I don't know when he's going to be healthy, but um, yeah, I don't know when he's going to be healthy uh, at this point, but it sounds like th he has a third injury. This time it's not even a foot injury. It's uh, some other muscle, I think, that is bothering him. I don't know if he'll be ready for week one, but even if he is, he has not played this preseason, similar to Brandon Coleman, he has not played this preseason. I don't know how much they're willing to play him right off the bat because you have not seen him play in a game scenario like that. It's going to take some time for him to ramp up again. Um, it's been tough, but uh, hopefully he's good by like midway point, like going 100% by the midway point of the season. And then John Ridgway over Federian Mathis. I like Ridgway more just because they play similar roles, but Ridgway has that connection with Dan Quinn, a former fifth round pick in Dallas just last year. Uh, disappointed there, but he was a very good piece. I like his um, uh, I like his attitude towards the game, the way he plays. So I have Ridgway over Federian Mathis. Um, so yeah, that's the defensive line. Ten players on the defensive line. Moving on to linebacker now. Uh, we'll start with middle linebacker. Bobby Wagner, of course, the starter, and then Jordan McGee, the backup. Um, this is also kind of where some of the positional stuff gets mixed up a little bit because some of them play both middle linebacker and outside linebacker. But Bobby Wagner is your starter. Jordan McGee is your backup. I think McGee is uh, a candidate for potentially being put on injured reserve after making this 53-man roster. We'll see with his injury how things go, but I would not be surprised if he gets put on injured reserve, misses the first month of the season because of that. Because, uh, again, he played six snaps in the opener, preseason opener, and then he has been injured ever since then. Outside linebacker, Frankie Louvu, Anthony Pittman, and then I have Dominique Hampton also as an outside linebacker. I don't really know if Hampton, again, will be listed as a safety or a linebacker, I have him listed as a linebacker because I think if he makes this team, that's where he's going to be playing more. Again, we have a very stacked safety room right now. And if Dom Hampton is going to uh, make this roster, again, a fifth round pick this year, if he's going to make this roster, he's going to make it by playing linebacker. We saw what he, uh, he we saw him play some linebacker against the Miami Dolphins last week. I have to watch back again how well he did, but I don't think it was horrible. Um, and so, they're trying to play him at different positions, different roles, see what he can do, because I don't think he's making this roster right now. At least he hasn't like earned it in terms of jumping some of these other guys at safety to make it as a safety. So there's that. Um, so, so that means the middle linebackers, uh, Michael Walker is not going to be making it. And then on outside linebacker, I think it's already kind of decided between those guys because Keandre Jones, Ben Nickel, and Bo Bauer have already been all released. So kind of we kind of know who the linebacker room or what the linebacker room is going to look like. Moving on to corner now, Emmanuel Forbes, Benjamin St. Juice, and Mike Shane are still are your three starters. And then I have Michael Davis and Noah Igbenogany as your two backups. So that's five corners, uh, which means uh, Chiganusium, Caillou Blue Kelly, A.J. Woods, James Pierre, Tariq Castro Fields, and others will not be making this roster. If I had to say one of those guys that I don't have making it has the best chance of making it, it would be Tariq Castro Fields if the cornerback room would be up to six players. If they're willing to keep six corners on this team, I think Tariq Castro Fields would be that number six. He's been kind of impressive throughout the preseason so far, but I don't know if they like him over a guy like Noah Ibanagani or Michael Davis because both of those guys have been making plays as well. Forbes will be a starter. I have no doubts about it. He'll be listed as a starter. I'd be shocked if he isn't. Benjamin St. Juice will be listed as a starter. I'd be shocked if he isn't. They've gotten the most first-team reps at the corner position so far. Mike Sainer still as your third corner as well. He's going to be playing some nickel. I wonder if they're going to play him on the outside at all, even though his best, um, his, his best strengths definitely make him fit as a nickel. So we'll see what happens with Sainer still. I think Sainer still is the best corner on this team right now. I've I've talked about it on Twitter a lot. He's the best corner on this team. I'm just gonna say that right now he's he's playing like the best corner on this team, even though he's not on the outside. Moving on to safety now, final position before we get to special teams. Final position at free safety, I have Quan Martin, Tyler Owens, and Jeremy Reeves, and at strong safety, Jeremy Chin and Percy Butler. So 
Safety has been, like I mentioned, one of the most stacked positions on this team in terms of depth. Don't really know what's happening uh, in terms of the back end of this. It's kind of up in the air. Quan Martin, Jeremy Chin, and potentially Tyler Owens seem like the only guys that are locked right now as the three as three guys on this ro- on this roster, final roster. But if we say this team keeps 10, uh, 10 DBs, five of them are going to be corners, and then five of them are going to be safeties, that means one of uh, Jeremy Reeves, Percy Butler, and Derek Forrest will not make this roster, saying that Tyler Owens does, because I feel like Tyler Owens right now is playing really well. I think Tyler Owens makes this roster. The UDFA out of Texas Tech. I've posted some cut-ups on, uh, of him on my Twitter at Mason underscore Kenahan. If you want to watch those, he's been all over the field so far this preseason. But Percy Butler has been another guy that kind of has a similar special teams role to a guy like Tyler Owens. So it's been up in the air with him. He's had a good preseason, though, in terms of defense. Jeremy Reeves has had some pretty hard hits so far during this preseason, but he's also missed some tackles. So he's kind of all over the place, but he also has a special teams role. And then Derek Forrest as well has um, doesn't really have a special teams role, and he's kind of struggled so far this preseason. So currently, I have Tyler Owens, Percy Butler, and Jeremy Reeves all making this roster with all three of them potentially playing special teams. Hold on. I have breaking news. I have breaking news. The Washington Commanders... I'm literally wearing his jersey right now. The Washington Commanders have traded Jahan Dotson to the Philadelphia Eagles. They have traded Jahan Dotson in a fifth-round pick to the Philadelphia Eagles. This has been a wild episode. Uh, I was I was taking a pause because the garage was opening, and so it was making noise. But the Commanders have traded Jahan Dotson to the Philadelphia Eagles. I'm wow. I did not think it was happening. I didn't think. Hold on. I don't have a breaking breaking news like thing. We'll get back to the defense. You guys, you guys know the defense. Well, we're good. We're good with the prediction. All right. Um, that's pretty much it. All right. A four for the fifty three man roster prediction. We've got uh, all right. Jeremy Chin, Quan Martin, Tyler Owens, Percy Butler, Jeremy Reeves. That does not matter right now because the Washington Commanders have traded Jahan Dotson in a fifth round pick to the Philadelphia Eagles in exchange for a 2025 third-round pick and two seventh-round picks. Wow. Uh, I was not expecting this, but here we are. Um, uh, wow. I'm I'm kind of stunned. I mean, it gives the Eagles a wide receiver three, while the Washington Commanders now are without Jahan Dotson, which now kind of makes my prediction not so great because I had Dotson in there as like a wide receiver five, which – not anymore. So, uh, yeah, Dotson. Um, I guess I'll put in like, I'll put in like uh, Jamison Crowder. All right, Jamison Crowder, welcome to the team because Jahan Dotson is no longer on the team. So Jamison Crowder is now uh, on the wide receiver six on this team because Dotson is uh, Dotson is gone. I'm I'm kind of stunned. I'm kind of stunned by this one. Uh, I did not see it coming. Didn't think we'd actually trade him, and now we trade him to a division rival even. The Philadelphia Eagles, we've traded him too. So I'm kind of stunned. It's a, uh, I don't really know what to say about this one. Do not say go for Brandon Ayuk. All right. I'll say that. Don't, don't say go trade for Brandon Ayuk. Okay. This team is not a Brandon Ayuk away from winning the, winning a guy like going to the playoffs. All right. So I'd be shocked if they trade for a guy like Brandon Ayuk. But, um, yeah, Jahan Dawson to the Eagles is something that I did not see coming if he were to be traded to a team. So, yeah. Um, yeah, uh, this is my, this is my live reaction to it. I was like waiting for my garage door to close because it, it was like shaking the room. So I went ahead and go, went to check Twitter. It said 10 minutes ago, Adam Schefter, a rare in division trade, Washington sending former first round pick Jahan Dotson and a fifth round pick to the Eagles in exchange for a 2025 third round pick and two seventh round picks. Let's bring up the trade calculator real quick. Uh, NFL trade calculator. Let's bring up the trade calculator. Did the Washington Commanders... Hold on. Hold on. 
Where's the trade calculator? All right, we're going to use over the cap. Let's see. I've never used the over the cap one before. The Commanders and the Eagles. Uh, let me find the Eagles. Hold on. Let's see if Adam Peters was cooking. Let's see if Adam Peters. He's been, two trades today for Adam Peters. All right, Cade York and John Dotson are off the team. I'm kind of stunned. We've got uh, a fifth round pick. Well, okay, so Washington has two fifth round. Oh, I know that's 2024. The garage is opening again. Um, we'll do a 2025 fifth round pick, and then where's Jahan Dotson? Jahan Dotson for a third round pick and two sevens, which they don't hold on. Two sevens, a third. Okay, so the Eagles have two third round picks next year. One of them is from Miami. And then two sevens. They got two sevens. So I'm just going to say two sevens. Um, winner, the Commanders. Over the cap says the Commanders uh, won the trade. The Fitzgerald Spielberger evaluation. Brad Spielberger says the Washington Commanders have won this trade. Uh, I guess. Let's see if it was. They'd still win it, I think. Yeah, they'd still win it if the pick was the 2025 third from Miami. So... Yeah, um, the the uh, Eagles will get Jahan Dotson, who has an average value of three point seven million right now. And he's going to be up for um, his contract ends, I think, or it's going to be up for an extension after this year, I believe. And then Washington will get a third round pick next year and two sevens. I am stunned. Um, I did not see this coming. Another trade between Howie Roseman and Adam Peters. We saw Peters give Roseman Cooper DeGene for Johnny Newton. Oh, sorry. It was Cooper DeGene for uh, Ben Sinnott and oh, who was the other guy? Ben Sinnott and Mike Sanders still last year, or last draft. And now Jahan Dotson is on the move. And the Washington Commanders have traded him away. I am stunned. I, I was recording my... Uh, 53 man roster prediction and Jahan Dotson gets traded. So this 43 minute episode, not only is Jane Daniels named the starter, not only is Kate York gone or it's Kate, Kate York is a commander. Jahan Dotson is now an Eagle. And I cut my, uh, my, my 53 man roster prediction short, I guess, because all right. Yeah, I'm kind of all over the place right now. I don't really know what to think. I was not expecting us to actually trade Jahan Dotson. Now, like I mentioned, for the offense, just put in Jamison Crowder, I think, over a guy like uh, over Dotson. And so you'd have Terry McLaurin, Alameda Zacchaeus, Deami Brown, Bryson Tremaine, Luke McCaffrey, and Jamison Crowder. I think now having Crowder on this team definitely is good because it brings a solid returner. I know Dotson has kind of worked as a returner before on the uh, on punt returns and kick returns during practice. He's never actually done it during the game, but bringing a guy like Jamison Crowder in is, um, yeah, it's something. So, wow, I'm uh, I'm a little bit stunned right now, to say the least, because I did. I mean, he's he's wheeling dealing with Harry Roseman, and according to these trade calculators, it says that the Washington Commanders have won the trade. So I'm uh I'm for that. Um they gained 775 points. I don't really know how that method works. I haven't used Spielberger's evaluation before. But yeah, I guess that'll do it. I got to go now make my reaction on Twitter. So uh yeah, that'll do it for today's episode. What an episode. Next episode will be out on um on Sunday on Monday morning, I think. Yeah, Monday morning it says. Monday morning. Next episode will be out Monday morning. Uh, recapping the Patriots and the Commanders. What a day, guys. What a day. I, I was not expecting this. Uh, that'll do it for today's episode of Keeping Up with the Commanders. See you guys in the next one. Peace.